Good morning, friends. Um, a bit of a windy one out here at the beach, but um, that's all right. It's still Florida. It's still only in the 50s, and um, my northern friends tell me that's not very cold. So, so welcome. Um, the sun's coming up right over there. And um, this week I had the joy of going to a conference called Southern Lights that's uh, in, near St. Simons Island, Georgia, and listened to some wonderful speakers and um, one of them gave me some new language and theology around feelings which of course if you've been watching it all you know is not a thing I'm afraid to talk about but um, but I hadn't quite heard it grounded in the way that this wonderful author uh, her name is Cole and she wrote a book called This Here Flesh as well as one called Black Liturgies um, that comes out next week so um, one of the things she kind of invited me to consider were these emotions that are often labeled bad emotions like lament or sadness, um, anger or rage. And um, one thing she sort of flushed out a little bit was the biblical support of these emotions. Um, they're in the Psalms, uh, sometimes far more violently than I would ever think uh, to consider. And um, even exhibited in many of the, the stories of the scriptures too. But the thing that she pointed out that I'd never really thought about was the ways in which um, power structures, systems, religious systems included, um, government systems for sure, even school systems, these kinds of things, um, encourage the repression of emotions because quote unquote happy people are easier to control, um, which is kind of disturbing. I think um, women, maybe in particular, I, I feel like I could speak for that people group, um, have historically uh, been you know, locked away in asylums for feeling our feelings. Um, been called hysterical. Uh, men are not allowed to feel their feelings, they're not allowed to cry, they're not allowed to experience anything but maybe anger is acceptable and masculine. And, um, you know, she spoke some about what happens when we oppress all these emotions because they're part of what it means to be human. And uh, human created in the divine image, even. And uh, it limits our ability to relate. It limits our ability to experience the fullness of life. It limits our ability to connect with our higher power. And... Uh, you know, for me personally, I, I kind of had a big feelings week last week. And um, to go from that into listening to a speaker who uh, not only said those emotions were appropriate, but that they're necessary was a gift. Not that I enjoy the harder emotions, <laughs> they're still hard. Um, and afterwards, maybe maybe somewhat like giving birth you know the labor's hard but there's a there's a gift afterwards there's a great joy and a recognition of uh, a wholeness that requires there to not just be good and sort of the capitalist promise of up and to the right but um, but there has to be the hard bits too and that they're often fertile ground for um, creativity um, connection uh, sort of spiritual enlightenment, dare I say. You know, it occurs to me that I often wish all of you um, peace and joy and happiness and things like that uh, when I close on Sunday mornings, but um, there's, a, there's an Andy Grammer song called I Wish You Pain. Not because pain for the sake of pain, not to be punishing, but that those painful bits are exactly the transformative moments and are so incredibly necessary to who we are as humans and even to who we are as a society where we can have empathy for each other and love each other honoring that all the bits aren't good bits so um, as hard as it is to say and maybe to hear I wish you pain the kind of pain that uh, that's like labor and birth something beautiful. Grace and peace, friends.